My name is Ben Roth. I'm a sculptor here in Jackson, Wyoming. I also do some furniture building and design work. I was born in Wyoming, grew up in Colorado, and I've lived here in Jackson for the last 12 years. Burka, B-U-R-Q-A. Did you make it? I did. And that's a hood of a car that I got out of a re the recycling bin at the body shop. So it was a, it was a trashed hood that was being replaced. And uh, so I recycled it. And I cut the eyes out. Uh, the burqa are the hoods that the women wear in Afghanistan or in the Middle East, and their eyes are, are, are all that show. And it's an issue of, uh, the, really our two big issues in the Middle East are cultural and oil. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is talking about. The cultural differences between their culture and ours, and the fact that it really comes down to cars and oil. That's the Flat Creek table. It's solid aluminum and polished, polished aluminum. It was machined with a CNC machine. This right here is, uh, we call it the Earth Heart Pair. And the reason we call it that is last summer an artist came to town and made an earth harp up on Snow King. And this was all the wire that he made the harp with. And so when we took the piece down, he's like, does anyone want this wire? So I kept it and I made it into a pair. Uh, this one, unfortunately, when we hung it, it ended up backwards. But it's a piece that's designed to turn. Uh, when you've got light passing through two layers of the dots, it looks different than when you're going through the single layer. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of blooms. It has kind of a bloomed effect as it goes around. And uh, it suggests kind of an earth. And it's a, it's a population issue, sculpture. You know, these are all the people. This is the earth, the egg theme. It's kind of the idea behind that piece. I was, it was made in two halves over a mold. These pieces are drop pieces that come out of a machine uh, at Wedco here in town. It's a machine that punches holes in metal, and the pieces fall out of the bottom of it. And they give me those pieces, and I weld them together. Um, and so I, I made it in two halves. I put it together, and then I plasma cutted the hole in the side of it. It's the turtle shell. It's fabricated bronze. So I took a sheet of bronze and I plasma cut all those pieces out, and then I hammered them to give them a compound curve, and then I welded them all together. Because it's bronze, we were able to patina it any color you want, really. And the guy who did the work, his name's Isaac, and uh, he's the patina guy up at Northwest Casting in Bozeman, and did a great job. This is called the Luna Moth, and again, it's also fabricated bronze. So I, I actually, with this one, I drew all the parts on the computer had them laser cut in Idaho, and then I had all the pieces brought here, and then I hammered them and welded them. The legs are hollow, so they were two pieces of metal that were flat. I gave them compound curved and welded them together. Uh, and then the different colors are achieved with patinas. Again, Isaac at Northwest Casting did that one. This is sort of the back of this piece. It's interesting from both sides. That's why we pulled it out into the middle of the room. Uh, it's called 11 Figures. It's supposed to suggest human forms maybe a family or a few families standing together. It also has a, a poplar tree feel to it as well. It's fabricated steel. It was originally a model for a larger one. I'm going to be building this, a piece similar to this for a client, and it'll be 20 feet tall and, and installed in a backyard. This one is cast in iron, and it was sand casted, and that's where you get this texture that's on the hair. It, uh, the original piece I carved with a grinder. Did the whole thing with, an, with a power grinder out of uh, PVC material, which is also a, a petroleum-based product that they make signs out of. So I got, started out with a round disc that was two inches thick and did it all with the grinder and then sent it to an uh, iron foundry in Idaho Falls and they did it in sand. It's solid, so it's very heavy. This was a scene I saw many years ago here in Jackson. Uh, I was driving down the road, and a great big guy climbed out of an RV with this little tiny dog, and you could tell that the dog was the apple of his eye. Like He was walking it, and he was so proud and so happy with this dog, and I just thought it was an interesting scene. So uh, I didn't have my camera that day, but I found <clears throat> a guy from Minnesota at Bubba's a few months later who was here for snowmobiling, and uh, he looked just like this. So I asked him to model for me. And so he walked back and forth in front of Bubba's, pretending to walk a dog. And I took a bunch of pictures of him. And then I did the piece from those pictures. The Daddy Long Legs, I've done this in a smaller scale. And I've also made it in a larger scale. 
and I would like to make it in a much larger scale. I could make him so his body was 10 feet off the ground and self-supporting, so no pole holding up the body. Uh, this works well on the wall. It also works well on the ground. It can be indoors or outdoors. Uh, if someone wants to see it on the ground, it's really easy to take that hook off the back and set it on the ground and let them check it out. Maybe put it under an interesting light or something. Uh, yeah, again, these are those same drop pieces that we got from Wedco. Legs are hollow, at least the top sections are. The screws on the feet are for install purposes, but if someone wanted it on, say, a pedestal or on the ground and they didn't want those, those uh, nuts on the ends of the legs, I can remove those. Uh, the armadillo, I'm very pleased with. It feels like uh, it's kind of a breakthrough piece for me. I had the idea. I knew exactly how I was going to do it. And except for how long it took, it went exactly as I'd intended, which was a, a really wonderful feeling. Um, there's only about five pieces of screen here. It looks like a whole bunch of pieces of screen, but the tail is a single piece of screen, and the body is all one piece of screen. And I just folded those to get those lines there. It's a nine-banded armadillo. This is the only uh, armored mammal in North America. You did look it up. Uh, yeah, I, well, I'd read up on it a couple weeks ago, and I came up with the idea. Uh, there are similar species or sister species in Central and South America, but this is the only one in North America. They are voracious diggers. And the sculpture is called I Dig, and those claws are pretty accurate, you know. And I think they're a real problem in Texas with people digging or digging around property, uh, but I think they're a really amazing animal, and that's a one of a kind. Uh, this one here is called Butte, and the Butte came out of the bottom of a log from another sculpture I did that was supposed to be here today, but I ran out of time, so I couldn't get it here. Uh, and it was the sculpture that I did for the fire festival. It was, called, it was a Makoshi, and uh, it was made out of Douglas fir trunk that we'd found. Hey, Ellie, could you be quiet, please? Thanks. Um, we got this tree stump from the river this summer, and we sculpted the grand out of this stump. And the stump was a little heavy, so we used a chainsaw and we cut this piece out of the bottom of it. And it was pretty close to this shape. My friend Brad did the cut. And, uh, and then I used a power planer and a sander and just got the shape. I started paragliding this summer, so I started noticing and admiring the, the buttes around town a lot more and their shape. And this is kind of a simplified version of that shape. This piece was the uh, kind of the bonus sculpture from the one out front. The one out front was the primary vision when I cut all the tips off the shovels. These extra pieces were these wonderful shapes. So I played around with them several different configurations, and this was the one I liked the most. And uh, I, cut, I cut them off the shovel with a six-inch cutting blade on a grinder, which is kind of a scary cut, but it's the cleanest cut that you can get. This one's called uh, Refuge, and uh, if you, there's a suggestion of an infant or something under the shawl. And this was a piece I'd done a long time ago in iron, and I just wanted to do it again in bronze. This piece is called Oval, and I'd done a larger version of it for a family that had commissioned me. Uh, they'd lost a child uh, just before term, and they wanted a sculpture to remember that child. And so this is inspiration from that. Yeah, the pine beetle, uh, the pine beetle came and landed on me about three weeks ago while I was having lunch, trying to decide which pieces to do for the show. So I scrapped another piece and went with this one instead. Uh, yeah, it was, it was the antennas that got me. You know, the antennas are twice as long as their bodies, and they move around really nicely. And, you know, it's kind of a play off of the antler theme in this valley. You know, it's my answer to the antler phenomenon. And it's bronze as well. The legs, upper parts of the legs are hollow. Uh, bottom parts are solid. The feet are pretty accurate on how they really look. This piece, I think, is ideal on a wall. Unfortunately, here it doesn't throw shadows, but it does throw nice shadows on an opaque wall with the light out here. It could also go on the ground, but I prefer it on the wall. Uh, and that's it, except for the one outside. So this piece, the inspiration for this piece happened next door at Ace Hardware. I was, uh, I was walking through the hardware store, and they had a sale on shovels, and they were only $6 a shovel. And I thought, isn't that bizarre that you can buy a shovel for $6? I thought, I wonder what I'd do if I could buy a whole bunch of shovels. And about 30 seconds later, I thought of that. And I placed an order, and they ordered me 15 shovels. And that was last fall. So I sandblasted them and then left them out in the snow all winter. And that's the effect I got.